Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Rare Variants. Uh, out there, there's a lot of video game consoles, of course, and we're familiar with tons of them. But a lot of them have either like limited edition versions or they have like total structural redesigns like the one sitting in front of me. And while I by no stretch of the imagination have all of these, or even close to it, I do have a few and I thought it would be fun to do videos on them. Now I've already done videos on the original Mountain Dew uh, Xbox and I've also done one on the Japanese uh, Orange Spice GameCube. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do this. This is the Japanese PSX. Uh, what it is, is a redesigned PlayStation 2 that was only released in Japan. Now, first and foremost, the story with this thing was that, it, well, first of all, the name, PSX. When we hear PSX, in, especially in the context of PlayStation, we think of the original PlayStation. But as it turns out, that was really more of a fan-adopted term. The official term for PSX is this machine. Now, uh, the thing with this machine, though, is that it was released in 2003, for a price tag the equivalent of $750 US. Today that might be about $1,000. And if you're thinking, why the hell is it so expensive? Uh, why did it only come out in one country? Well, I, I, can't, I can only speculate on why it only came out in one country, but my guess was is because this thing, you have to understand, was a DVR, a digital video recorder, first, and a PlayStation 2 second. Uh, this is the only piece of PlayStation tech not designed by the PlayStation division at Sony. This was designed by one of their media divisions. And largely, that's why I think a lot of the problems with this machine exist. Uh, first and foremost, it is extremely unreliable. Um, I mean, really unreliable. Like, if you thought the Red Rings of Death on the 360 was famous, holy shit, the, not even close. Uh, the thing with this thing was that it was notorious for any number of problems. Bad hard drives. Uh, yes, there's a hard drive in there, 250 gigabyte hard drive. Again, this thing was a DVR first, a game console second. Uh, bad motherboards, bad disk drives, bad lasers. Uh, if you find one on eBay, if you look one up, almost all of them they'll say it doesn't work. Some aspect of it doesn't work. If you look online, anybody who has one generally says, yeah, mine doesn't work. Or YouTubers who have them will say, same thing, doesn't work. They're very, very hard to fix. Um, mine, of course, no exception, does not work. Uh, mine will power up, uh, but all that happens is, you know, you'll get the lights in the front and then you turn it on. You'll see this blue screen on your television, not like a blue screen of death. It's the beginning of the dashboard and it says PSX and then it just instantly goes to static and it doesn't work. I've looked into it. Uh, it could either be a bad hard drive or a bad motherboard. If it's a bad hard drive, that's replaceable, though complicated. A bad motherboard, nothing I can do about. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. But even if that's the case, even if I were to fix it, uh, there's no guarantee the lasers work. There's no guarantee the disk drive works. It's, you know, I don't know. Uh, so really, it's just a collector's piece. It's just something nice to have. Uh, so the other thing about it, though, is when you actually see it in person, it's pretty obvious the PlayStation division didn't design it. For example, you look at the front here, and um, there's, this is the, uh, the front array, right? You see there's two memory card slots right there. There's a bunch of buttons, there's some, a USB port, there's a memory stick port there. You might notice something's missing. What is it? <laughs> Controller inputs. Now, again, you have to remember, this was designed by the, uh, one of the media divisions. So the logic with this machine was, you put it into your like home theater setup, right? And you know you connect your television to it so you can record your television. And as a bonus, you'll be able to play music CDs on it, DVDs on it, PlayStation 1 games and PlayStation 2 games. But since they were the media division, they didn't really think about the whole like lack of logic in putting the controller ports in the fucking back. The controller ports are in the back. So imagine this scenario. You've got the thing all set up there. And you're like, okay, I want to play it, and now you have to like, oh shit, I have to like unhook it and pull it out and like pull it back up like this and find it. it. Gets even worse. See the way this is designed at the bottom here? This is a separate piece of plastic that you're actually supposed to remove uh, when you want to play it. Look at this. You have to take this off, and then your PlayStation, your uh, controller ports are back here next to the video output and the cable jacks. That's just um, that's just terrible design. Uh, I think the logic, I'll put that on later, I think the logic with this was that uh, you'd have the controllers plugged in and then you would never use, you'd never take them out, which is just stupid. Uh, I, I don't know why the hell they thought that was a good idea. 
But uh, yeah, so the, the, I mean, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, that's kind of the story with this thing. It was discontinued in 2005, did not have support for particularly long. Uh, one thing it's, that it did introduce into the PlayStation family, if you will, was the, uh, the use of the cross media bar. Now, if you're like, what the hell is that? If you look on the box, which I'm lucky enough to have, you might notice these icons look very familiar, especially in the order in which they're arranged. Uh, the cross media bar is essentially the dashboard that the PlayStation Portable and the PlayStation 3 use. This machine has that. This originated that. This thing is basically the link between the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3, the stepping stone, if you will. And uh, that's, that's really its biggest contribution. Um, I imagine in the future these things will be extremely valuable. Right now they're expensive as shit as it is, even though they never work. They're usually about like $400, sometimes if you're lucky you can maybe like down to $200. Uh, but I think eventually people are going to want to collect for them, they're going to want to try and pick it up when they pick up all the random PlayStation hardware. This will be hard to find because it was only released in Japan, it was only sold for basically a little over a year, didn't sell well at all, and uh, the ones that did get sold almost none of them actually function, so I imagine most of them that even did sell were tossed out. So I think most of them are in the hands of collectors at this point, so good luck. Uh, but if you do find one for cheap, it is a very nice uh, collector's piece. Now in my case, uh, I got mine in Canada uh, at a store called Toy Rat. Uh, now if you guys have been watching me for years, you know I love that store. I, every time I'm up there, I, I check it out and I, I usually do a video on it. I have, in fact, recently I did a video on it because I got to go up there in May of 2016 for just like a weekend, and I hopped in and I did a video you guys can check out. But in uh, January of 2016, what happened is I went to Toy Rat, and he had just hauled down this massive Japanese collection from a guy, and uh, he he's like, hey, check out this PSX, isn't this cool? And I was like, yeah, it's cool as shit. And he was like, it's yours, just take it. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's absolutely yours, for free. I couldn't believe it. Toy Rat's a hell of a nice guy. Uh, and of course I asked him, does it work? He's like, oh, no, of course not. And there you go. But even not functional, which is generally the case, they're still pretty pricey. It was just a nice gesture on his part. It included the box, it included the uh, remote control. Uh, didn't include the actual uh, controller, um, but it's just a white standard PlayStation uh, 2 controller. So no big deal there. But uh, yeah, when I got it, it was in, it was a little bit more worse for wear than it is now. It was much more yellowed, it was dusty. I was able to open it up, clean it out. Uh, I was able to reverse the yellowing and stuff. But uh, yeah, not, but it still doesn't actually work, which is unfortunate and it probably never will, to be brutally honest with you. But uh, yeah, the other thing about it though is, it's of course it's region locked, you know, it's designed to play Japanese DVDs. Well, that's region locked. Japanese PS1 and PS2 games, also region locked. Uh, getting it actually repaired would be a massive pain in the ass and probably not actually worth anything in the end because uh, it likely would break from some other reason. So, again, just a nice display piece. That That's the only reason I would actually recommend getting one of these things is just for that purpose. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's kind of it. There's not really much else to say on it. It's just an obscure piece of PlayStation history that most people uh, don't know about just because it was so uncommon. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned. I'm sure I'll do another one of these at some point. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.